action, pace, plot. They're meaningless without great characters to motivate them. Star Wars has been rich in those from the beginning. How did we get into this mess? I really don't know how. We seem to be made to suffer. It's our lot in life. You're always surprised with characters. I mean, in film, it's even more dramatic than it is in, uh, in writing. Because eventually, you actually take a real person and stick them into that character. And that real person brings with him, or her, an enormous package of reality. I mean, 3PO is just a hunk of plastic. And without Tony Daniels in there, it just isn't anything at all. I had a different idea for the character originally. I wanted him to be more of a used car dealer, very slicko, very oily. But that character inhabited that costume so strongly because of what Tony had done that I couldn't change it. Where do you think you're going? Well, I'm not going that way. It's much too rocky. This way is much easier. What makes you think there are settlements over there? Don't get technical with me. What mission? What are you talking about? I've just about had enough of you. Go that way. You'll be malfunctioning within a day, you nearsighted at scrap pile. And don't let me catch you following me, begging for help, because you won't get it. If it required an act of high imagination to create a lovable droid, think of what was involved in creating a new star for Empire. When I came to the second film, to start working on uh, The Empire Strikes Back, um, a lot of the information and the training that takes place was originally designed to be done by Ben. But since I killed off Ben in the first film, uh, it left me with a lot of exposition, a lot of training scenes that I didn't have anybody to perform. So I had to come up with a new Jedi Master who was even more powerful than Ben. And I had to come up with somebody who would be interesting to watch. I am wondering, why are you here? I'm looking for someone. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say. <laughs> right. Help you again? Yes? I don't think so. I'm looking for a great warrior. Oh! <laughs> great warrior? <laughs> Wars not make one great. <laughs> I mean, I was very apprehensive about how that was going to work. Could I take a main character in a movie and use a little rubber puppet? And would that, I mean, is it going to happen or is it just going to be a disaster? And, uh, and right up until the moment where he was on film and talking, it looked like it was going to be a disaster. You know, little hints, but it looks pretty good. And Frank can do some really funny things, and that sort of seems to work. And is it going to happen? But then when it goes onto the screen, it's magic. <laughs> oh, you're making a mess. Mm. Hey, mm. give me that. Mine, or I will help you not. I don't want your help. I want my lamp back. I'm going to need it to get out of this slimy mud hole. Mud hole? Slimy? My hole this is! Archie, uh, let him have it. Archie! Uh, move along, little fellow. We got a lot of work to do. No, no, no. Stay and help you, I will. <laughs> Find your friend. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi Master. Uh, Jedi Master? Yoda. You seek Yoda. You know him? Mm. Take it to him, I will. <laughs> yes, yes, but now we must eat. Come. <laughs> Good food, come. <laughs> I think more than anything else with Star Wars is the characters have always been a surprise and a delight as they've come to life. The surprise and delight of Jedi were those furry, funny, and ferocious little creatures of the forest who, like Yoda before them, would turn out to be a great deal more than merely adorable. Hey. <gasps> Cut it out! <laughs> 
What none of us knew when we first met them was that they had the power to overthrow a mighty empire. Sped up in its uh, perception uh, of uh, visual material, uh, primarily of the local television, television commercials.